Hi there, welcome back. If you've uh, been watching anything regularly on my channel, you would have seen this uh, gadget, or as one of my subscribers suggests, this uh, test fixture. And um, no mystery here, it's a lamp limiter with an isolation transformer inside. Now I did uh, a previous video uh, in which I described the design and construction of this thing. It's very, very simple and it's incredibly useful. This thing has saved more equipment on my bench than anything else because it basically limits uh, the current in the case of uh, a, a straight short circuit. Now, I have been using this for some time. Um, I'm very, very happy with it. I can turn in a 40 watt bulb, another 60 watt, another 40, another 60 or any uh, some of these in a series with a load. I can also bypass it in which case I would just have the isolation transformer in here, the uh, socket at the end here, European obviously in my case, doesn't have an earth, it just has the, uh, the two uh, outputs from the, uh, from the limiter going in there, so I can get you know, full mains through the uh, isolation transformer by pushing bypass. If I put limit on, then I can decide how much restriction I want, I can have a 40 watt, I can put these two on, that's 100 watt. I can put that off and I got a 60 watt. I can put that on and that on, I got 80. Um, these go to 100, 140, 160. So it goes up to 200 watts in series. Now with 200 watts in series, I've basically got a restriction of uh, under an amp, um, which is the maximum current that can go through. And that's the event of being quite sure that there's no main, uh, no basic short. However, I want to change this and you know why? Uh, well, for one reason is I think nobody's ever satisfied with the, the prototype they've done. So you've got to have more uh, attempts to perfect it. That's the whole concept of prototyping. But more importantly, I've recently uh, noticed a very serious limitation, or actually two serious limitations with this. Let me explain. The fact that you have a isolation transformer in here is great. And anybody working with uh, high voltages, whether it be just mains or whether you're working with tube radios where you've actually got higher than mains voltages, you'll understand that that's something that can really save your life. Um, there is a problem though, and that is that because this transformer is limited to about just over an amp, I think it was, um, what I do find is if it starts drawing close to the limit, close to an amp, for example, then my output voltage starts suffering, which means that the, the transformer itself doesn't have very, very good regulation. So if I have 100 milliamps coming through there in bypass, let's call it just the isolation transformer, I'll have 235 volts on here, for example, which is the full mains voltage passing through in a ratio of one to one through the isolation transformer. But if I have uh, 800, 900, 1000 milliamps coming through there, uh, I no longer have 235 volts. I've got 220 something volts, uh, which means that the winding of the transformer is actually reducing the maximum voltage coming through. So I've got losses happening here. Now, that only occurs when I have a uh, high current uh, draw. And I can see that because my readout here gives me the voltage that's actually going to the load and the current that the load is consuming. However, there are times when that is inconvenient. So I would like to be able to have the full mains voltage going through with the option of not putting it in bypass, but actually have the mains coming through without the isolation transformer so that I can get a real um, scenario of mains going into a piece of equipment. You know, I can start off with certain numbers of, of limits on and then as I reduce the limit and finally put on the bypass, I know that I've got full mains going in there. And if this thing draws, you know, one and a half amps or whatever, I'm going to have the full mains voltage going in, not a reduced version. And because this particular module, this readout module, this measuring module, is at the output, I can still see what exactly is going in. In other words, what is the line voltage and what is the current draw? 
So that's important for me. So what I need to do is to create a way of bypassing the isolation transformer um, and have the option of having it in or out. In other words, not just bypassing the limiting, but actually bypass the actual isolation transformer. Now, that might sound a bit crazy. You, you'd wonder, you know, isn't that too dangerous? Yes, it's more dangerous, but bearing in mind that before I had the isolation transformer on here, I was doing things directly anyway with the lamp limiter, um, it's no more dangerous than it was then. I've got to warn you, if you don't uh, feel comfortable with this stuff, don't mess with it. it it'll kill you, okay? And, um, you know, I don't want that on my conscience. So beware. The other reason is the earth. Now, that sounds nuts. Um, why should the earth be such a, an issue? Well, with an isolation transformer, to enjoy the full benefits of the isolation transformer, you do not have your earth connected on here. It's not that dangerous, but it does make it more dangerous. I mean, you are earth anyway, so if you touch any one of those points, you're making it earth. Effectively, if you, whatever, whichever of the output lines you touch, that becomes your earth slash neutral, okay? Zero volts to ground. Then if you touch the other one, you got uh, your full voltage across you. But if you don't touch the other one, you're basically making that one neutral. If you've got your earth over here and you're not connecting it directly to any one of those, that's basically the same thing. However, there is a situation, and I had a situation recently, where I tested a piece of equipment. It was a, uh, a powered uh, sub, I think it was. Subwoofer, yeah. And this thing is working perfectly on here with bypass, all right? Isolation transformer was on, but there was a bypass. There was no limitation. Music was coming through, no problem. The minute I plugged it into the back there, it tripped and it blew some fuses. And I later found out that something as stupid as a screw that had scraped out, scratched out the plastic coating on an electrolytic capacitor, which happened to be the negative supply, um, was making a short to earth, to making a short to earth, not to the ground of the unit. So this thing was not measuring a short because there was no earth. And suddenly when I plugged this in, I had negative supply directly to the earth wire, which caused the thing to blow. So there are times when I do want the full earth going through so that I can do the final tests on a real life situation, but with the option of having the limiting coming in. All right. So that's what I need to do. I'm going to put in a switch that uh, lets you choose between uh, direct mains or isolation transformer. And I'm also putting another switch that uh, allows you to lift the earth or connect the earth. Now, ideally, if I could find a uh, three pole two way switch, triple pole double throw switch, yeah, then I could actually just connect that to the output here and have all of them switched with one, but they're pretty difficult to get, and I don't want to go into creating a relay circuit, so I'm just going to use two toggle switches. One is a dual switch, which uh, is going to connect the, um, the output um, coming through the limiter to directly to mains or to the isolation transformer, and the other one will be a ground lift switch. So I've just got to remember, huh, it's easy to say now, but I've got to remember that uh, when I do put this on isolation transformer, and if I want isolation, then I've got to remember that I've got to put the, the ground lift on as well so that my earth doesn't go through there. So let me show you the circuit we had and I'll show you what we need to do. This is basically what we had, um, what we have over there. We have our live and neutral coming in. It goes through a double switch so that uh, when you do switch it off, that off and on at the front of the unit switches both both lines off. And bear in mind that in, uh, in Portugal, the European system, we don't have a dedicated neutral line. So you can plug in this thing. This plug goes in both ways. I mean, ultimately, if you've got some that has a, a prong sticking out of the socket, you could actually dedicate it, but most of them just go in both ways, okay? So it is important that you are careful because you don't really know which one is neutral and which one is live most of the time. Now, you switch it off, it goes through the transformer. This is a 230 volts in, 
and 230 volts out. It's a one-to-one -one transformer, isolation transformer, no problem. Through a 1.5 amp fuse in case we have a short somewhere here and I don't want to blow the transformer. And then we've got the lamps and the bypass switch. Now what the lamps do is you plug one in and your current comes through here through that lamp, lights up the lamp depending on the current that's drawn on your live out. The neutral obviously goes, or the neutral, at this in this case it's no longer the neutral, it's just one of the lines, goes straight through. If you put two in parallel, you've got 40 plus 60, you've got 100 watts, etc, etc, etc. So you can put as many in circuit as you want. If you have them all out of circuit, then no current goes through. If you want to bypass all that, you just bypass there, there's no limit, no restriction, and the only protection you've really got here is a 1.5 amp fuse and the fact that it's going through an isolation transformer. This uh, ammeter voltmeter arrangement here, that's that little module at the front which measures uh, current uh, going through into the load and voltage across going through into the load. So that's fine so far. Now what I want to do really is I want to keep this the same. I want to keep this whole thing the same over here. And I just need to cut this off here at this point and choose between taking these two points into the limiter circuit or taking those two points into the limiter circuit. So let me just redraw this the way I'm going to wire it up and I'll show you now. Okay, so what we have here is, this is a dual toggle switch. When it's down like that, what it's getting really is it's getting directly fed from the mains, okay? So there you do have live and neutral going through, and it goes through the limiting circuit. If you flip the switch up, then you're getting your, main, your supply going into the limiter circuit from your transformer and your isolation comes into effect. Now the only thing that's uh, left to do here is to have the earth going over here to an on-off switch. And to the earth uh, pin of the socket. So this is your earth and lift. Okay, and that's it. So that's basically what I've got to put in here. Now, bear in mind, I've still got the switch disconnecting the mains at, at the front. I want to make sure that that disconnects everything inside the unit. Um, there's something else. Uh, when I choose to go directly to the mains, in other words, if the switch is down like this, the transformer is being powered so the output is there, but there's no current draw. But I do have 230 volts coming out of the transformer. I'm not actually switching off the transformer. There may be a simpler way of doing this, but this is the easiest way that I can figure with the wiring that I have in there. So that's what I'm going to do. That's what I want to wire up. And I'll then end up with a unit where I can literally connect this via the uh, isolation transformer and have my limiting functions and my bypass function and uh, reading the current and the voltage and... The thing is safe so I can touch it and not get zapped or I can connect it straight to live, neutral and earth by, you know, putting the switch down, bypassing the isolation transformer and activating the, um, the ground, the earth uh, switch so that what I have at that end is my mains, albeit limited if I don't select the bypass. And I have a reading for current and I have a reading for voltage. So that should make it a lot uh, more useful. There is a warning here. You have to be very, very careful that you don't forget what position you've got this on. Um, before uh, playing with any of the stuff where high voltages are involved, I have this habit of sort of stepping back and looking at it, trying to look at it from, you know, a, a, a pretty uh, neutral um, point of view just to make sure I'm not doing something stupid. And believe it or not, um, experience doesn't uh, save you from doing stupid things. In fact, some of the most stupid things I've done 
have been things that I had done before and, and, and in situations that I've been in many, many times. And just one little mishap, one little careless mistake, stupid mistake, has cost me a lot of work, a bit of a fright, um, and just it's just unnecessary. So the fact that one is experienced does not mean you're not going to make a mistake. And it's always advisable. Two things. One, don't mess with the stuff if you don't know what you're doing. And two, mess with it carefully if you do know what you're doing. Always consider the possibility that you've done something really, really, really noob and stupid. Um, it'll probably save your life. Right, I hope uh, you enjoy that. And uh, if you haven't seen the uh, previous video, there's a link uh, along this video for it. Go and look at that. Um, it's nothing special, but it uh, it's probably one of the most useful uh, gadgets I have on this bench, other than the multimeters and so on. But it really is useful and it saves a lot of equipment from blowing up. Right, thanks for watching. Hope it helped and see you soon.